that is fascist. That's the goal of the government, to eliminate voices from media yeah. that they don't like. White House correspondence dinners used to be where it was friendly, but they used to take some jabs yeah. at the sitting president or sitting former vice president. Uh, in this case, not so much, but there were a couple. So here's actually one example that I do, you know, fair play. Uh, a comedian took aim at uh, Joe Biden's age. It's crazy to think that Joe Biden is only one heartbeat away from no one taking him seriously as president. <laughs> sorry for that one. That was... <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. That was actually from nine years ago. That's right. Never mind. <clears throat> that was an actuary tables joke from nine <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the man's going to be running again. Joel Jeez. McHale was a child. Yes. <laughs> So this year, uh, instead, uh, Joe Biden, former vice president, went full cringe, and uh, he leaned in, declared himself, trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. And look, I don't have to think it's funny, but I acknowledge that it was a joke. He called himself Dark Brandon. Roy, the podium is yours. I'm going to be fine with your jokes, but I'm not sure about Dark Brandon. Ooh, you suck. I can't see. Yeah, you can't see. I can't see. <laughs> it's really going to stumble. Wow. <laughs> now, look. Here's he has the thing. no time. He can't deliver. Ooh. What do we do, guys? Uh, the Ray-Bans. Go with yeah. the Ray-Bans. Yeah. Are these those blue blockers? Right. I love those. <laughs> and, of course, here's the thing, right? The left, they did this with fake news. A lot of you don't remember this. Don't let the memory hold this. Fake news was something that they tried to use, right? They tried to use and refer to any conservative news as fake news, and the right took it and co-opted it, and they tried to get it back. The left has been much less successful in attempting the same kind of maneuver, trying to co-opt the meme of Dark Brandon uh, since this last summer. <laughs> Biden even used the meme in his 2024 campaign on T-shirts, and he actually likes the meme so much he even incorporated it into really? some of his, yeah, uh, scratch and sniff campaign flyers. Hmm. So that was, yeah, it was... Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, oh, no, don't finish the job. I did not like the that. Job. I did not like that in my no, mail. It's, I hate seeing that. And here's the thing, too, is, is people talk about bullies, right? Let's be, okay, what is bullying? Bullying is a pile. Bullying is when you're picking on someone who doesn't have the ability to fight back. Now, everyone knows that Tucker Carlson is a very popular uh, figure himself. But Tucker Carlson, obviously, I guarantee you, his invitation got lost in the mail, was not course, there at the yeah. White House uh, correspondence dinner. And so they, together with a, a room full of people who think exactly as they do, they never value, into, they only value diversity of skin color, of gender, never that of intellectual diversity. Um, they decided to do a pile on and take aim at Tucker Carlson. We really have a record to be proud of. Vaccinated the nation, transformed the economy, <laughs> earned historic legislative victories and midterm results, but the job isn't finished. I mean, it is finished for Tucker Carlson. <laughs> what are you wooing about like that? Like, you think that's not reasonable? Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a first break. off, first off, so much of this. What? Why is the Asian from Jurassic Park there? That's right. Go. <laughs> it, it, there aren't there aren't enough sycophants <laughs> out there she was, it was they were like even like even like uh cheryl crow's not gonna show up ah give me the guy who screwed up the eggs in jurassic park <laughs> i like that guy he was gay in put the him last there one, right <laughs> put him front and center i like his flat top <laughs> and, i love that guy and there here's the thing when we we've done closing time obviously now this is a an entertainment show. This is a comedy yeah. show. And of course, we make all the references available at loudoutscredit.com. But our primary goal is to keep you entertained, informed, and then you can research as much as you want. When we do the closing time, for example, with Don Lemon, understand the context here. When he says it's done for Tucker Carlson, it's as though Joe Biden doesn't understand that the internet exists. He's <laughs> like, off cable. Who's going to see him now? Nobody. Nowhere left to go. How can he reach Nobody. anyone? Is he going to ham radio? Ah, he's done. <laughs> Tucker's first tweet after his separation with Fox News received in its first day 74.9 million views. That's more than all of cable news from the entire same day. 53. 3.1 million views. <laughs> One, he listed it in his accomplishments. I don't know if he caught that. We've had a lot of accomplishments in this administration. Are, Joe Biden, are you saying that one of your accomplishments is getting Tucker Carlson fired? Is that where you're leaning? <laughs> That's a very good point. I don't Think know. of what he's saying. Maybe he's not trying to, but maybe he is a little bit. And second, it's like, 
This guy's not going anywhere. You think he was a problem when he was shackled at Fox News? Mm -hmm. Just you wait. Yeah. Now that he can go and speak freely, it is going to get worse before it gets better for you, sir. Yes. You wonder how that tweet would have been uh, treated if Elon didn't have. Uh, That's a good point. Oh, of course. Would that have ever gotten? Would it have been New York Post no. story? Yeah. Hunter Biden laptop story. And that's a very good point, Joel. Here they see these as legislative accomplishments. Why? Well, you see Jen Psaki, you see Karine Jean Pierre, them talking about how they are working with big tech organizations, they are working with media organizations to remove misinformation. By the way, you may not like it. People get things wrong. We get things wrong. Yeah, of course. Tucker Carlson has gotten things wrong, but to act as though Tucker Carlson is a purveyor of misinformation, he's the only person back then on cable news who covered January 6th accurately. And we did it on this show the week yeah. after, and we did a three-hour stream several months later when they were going to be holding their hearings, and they didn't because of the weather. This is something... In another state. <laughs> yes, in another state. <laughs> not, not even close to them. Think about this for a second. Yeah, I, I, I skimmed over it. I didn't write it down as a note. Legislative accomplishments, and then it is done for Tucker. Yeah. That is, their, that is fascist. That's the goal of the government, to eliminate voices from media that they don't like. More proof of that. Again, the political, entertainment, media, industrial complex, they all work together. Like Nick DiPaolo says, I think there's uh, 10 guys in a room. He's not that far off. No, I agree. Because you hear what former Vice President Biden just said. Now, do you also remember how the media responded when Donald Trump would address or attack the media? They would silence him, too. It's one thing to say the press is liberal. It's one thing to say the Ninth Circuit is liberal. But when you start saying that somebody has uh, is an enemy of the people, then that does incite people to violence, especially if it's coming from the president of the United States. Uh, but you can call the president of the United States the enemy of the people. You can call right. MAGA Republicans the enemy of the people and do it behind this really demonic looking red background like yeah. Joe Biden did in that yep. speech. You can do that and it's totally fine. Is it just because it hits too close to home and you don't want to be revealed for who you are, Joe? Yeah. And I also, that's, that's here's an is. important note. If you go back to a change, I might have talked about this because at that point in time, <clears throat> the uh, press being the enemy of the people was a Stalin quote. It wasn't a Donald Trump quote. Yeah. Then when they started quoting him that way, he responded as he did indignantly, like, it is the enemy of the people. So he responded that way, and now I've they have the quote. Say. <laughs> right, now they have the quote. The initial yeah, quote exactly. was not the, it was not those exact words. They were not those words. The media quoted Stalin to try and attribute it to Trump, and then he responded and said, you know what, in this case, yes, let's go with it. And now they act as though, oh, Stalin, Donald Trump. But what's really more pervasive is what you see with Joe Biden and, hey, Tucker Carlson's done. The difference is, here's a silver lining. Here's where you pick up some wins. They don't know. They don't know about the internet. I don't know that they know about how many of you are on Rumble on a regular basis. Anyone can do something once. Doing it day in, day out, day in, day out. That's what's happening right now on Rumble. YouTube is going to be a shell of itself. It is going to be an irrelevant shell of its former self. That's why you can watch on Rumble. And I, I want to watch them wither away. Now, if there's one clip... That also highlights the self-importance. It's nothing but virtue signaling at the White House press, uh, White House, what is it, White House Correspondence Dinner? Yes. Uh, whatever it is. Correspondence Dinner. Got it's it. not the gridiron thing. No. Dinner Democrat a, Correspondence Dinner. There's a pancake breakfast. <clears throat> yes, there is. So many stupid things. That's <laughs> off the legislative agenda. <clears throat> well, the pancake breath, the pancake prayer breakfast, remember, that was supposed to be just sort of like inconsequential. Like, go out yeah. and like, uh, thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. But then Ben Carson went out and was like, the Quran is uh, not uh, reconcilable with the Constitution. They were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to eat some waffles. He came out yesterday sort of like, and drop bomb and bomb and we're bomb. To eat some waffles. <laughs> but do it in a very low voice yes. with a bit of pitchiness to it. <laughs> and I'm going to clip you off and pick you off and pick you off. Have fun. And yes. that's how Ben Carson broke into the spotlight. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Remember when I was going, remember this thing he just did it? That, like it was supposed to be the, people were like, at the pancake breakfast, you're bullshit. <laughs> and then your mom sitting next to him was like, what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would kill you if I were in the country uh, where I could. You, you should be dead right now. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was like, we all, uh, we're all here, we all pray to the same God. He's like, I don't pray to your God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pray to your <laughs> false prophet God. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the media went after him. Remember, he was an Uncle Tom. Yeah. He wasn't black enough. The guy yeah. grew up in Detroit to a single mother household and tried to stab her and she was saved by her belt buckle. This guy was on the A team for black guys, okay? If you want to talk about the black experience. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. <laughs> so if there's one clip, I'm just I like Ben Carson. Bullied I for getting too. good grades. Yeah, he's bullied yeah. for getting good grades. What are you doing? Going to school, yeah. you know. But he had a slow separated. seething rage where then he yeah, would try right. and stab them. Yeah, he's an idiot who separated conjoined twins. Yeah, because that's easy. Yeah, he yeah. got an A in fashioning what, what shivs. Did Trump say he's an okay doctor. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's an okay doctor. I guess. I don't know how hard it is to separate conjoined twins. <laughs> Never done it, but I'm pretty easy. I ship grape seed oil, a paper cutter, call it a day. <laughs> a YouTube video I can follow. <laughs> paper cutter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he's part right. That's I didn't. Part <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. I'm going to go back to my 19 bathrooms with chandeliers. You ever see his house? Oh, my for goodness. Sale? He, oh, my he gosh. Saddam Hussein was, with that. It was the gaudiness. most pimped out house I'd ever seen. Okay. <laughs> Weren't there giant portraits of, of himself? Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. And that's me? That's okay. You guys don't need I'm gonna, I'll, I love Ben Carson to the day I die because yep. of what he did back then. So if there's one clip, though, with this correspondence dinner of the self-righteousness uh, that is on display and is highlighted by any sort of one crystallized clip, I would say it's Chrissy Tagan's entrance. Here you go. <laughs> Three people. It's also very revealing. <laughs> And by the way, those people carrying the back of her dress, they don't look... Like, were those people hired to carry the back of her dress, or was it like Simon, like, carry his cross with her dress? <laughs> I mean, you they don't scary. look like they were there in an official capacity. It's just some woman in a sweater with a purse, like, it, all right, I guess It I'll looks like dress. her help is what it looks like. It's like yeah. she's saying, I need people. This, you do this at your wedding to make sure that it kind of flows correctly. Just, right. Just let you, and by the way, they dropped it at the end there, and everything is fine. I know. <laughs> well, was she walking across spikes that she was going to get caught on? I don't know. <laughs> Don't understand. Any, no, it's, but it's an honor to carry a wedding dress. I mean, for some yes, you know, self-entitled person going to correspondence dinner, it's a... Yeah. yeah. By the way, the, the still photos, and do not look them up, are not flattering. No. Of, of Chrissy Teigen? Front of Listen, Chrissy I took Tegan an informal poll of the gals of the gals out, out front, and, you know, they're not fans. They don't no. think she's the, Chrissy the beauty that she's held out to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For crying out loud, she has, she has cheek implants <laughs> that make her look like Lady Lane around the merry-go-round. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Have you seen it's like it's somebody like sticking out. out? Yeah, no, it is. I, and I wasn't saying that. I was saying that I am. basically. Pulling, <laughs> imagine wearing a robe, and now imagine somebody carrying the back of it. Right. It pulls it apart in the front. It's it, not a good look. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And by the way, this is one of the Can women out there. No. You don't need to do this. Yeah. Look, you don't need to do this. I know the left will try and say fat and obese is beautiful, but let me tell you something. You don't need fake lips. You don't need fake cheeks. Guys, normal average straight males are not the ones who want you to do this. It's the fashion. It's the same leftist social engineers who tell you that it's fine to be obese so long as you have fake stuff in your face. You don't need any of it. It doesn't make you look better. It makes you look weird. We don't expect that of you. We don't want you to look like a doll. We think that you're beautiful as you are within the parameters of health. Really, this is one thing that I hope women out there, especially someone who has a daughter, you, you are take care of yourself, stay healthy, Groom your, you know, good hygiene, practice that. You don't need to be getting work done. You don't need to be getting plastic surgery in your teens. But the side that says you can have an adictomy or vaginoplasty when you're eight years old is also the side that says put in some cheek implants, put in some lip fillers. By the way, if your BMI is 34, just as good. But just be careful. You could end up looking like Madonna or Joan Rivers. That could be your fate in life. But well, Joan, I, I beg to differ a bit. Our, our makeup gal this morning. She had a lot of extra work to do on me. She, she oh, that's did. makeup. Yeah. That's not. It was like, like a car accident. Yeah, you know? <laughs> she was wondering what went wrong. She spent more time on you than they did on Clint Howard. <laughs> she had a tr <laughs> she had a trowel. It was just vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this, this is gonna hurt. Plaster some of Paris. mixer. <laughs> and you guys, <laughs> you guys can let us know uh, if you watch the dinner and and and, uh, and you know what? I would love to hear from you women out there. Look, I hate that you feel pressure to change who you are physically beyond what you can control. Here's the thing, you can control your weight, right? You can control your diet. You can control, your, you can't control your facial structure. You can't control your nose. Maybe you don't have perfect teeth. That's all okay. No one expects it of you. We do expect basic parameters of health. That's the difference. And I think that's where the disconnect takes place. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.